Well, hello there. This is Alan Levine, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of several sites that use WordPress and the feed WordPress to create what we're calling connected type courses. And I've got to start with DS106. I'm sure you've heard about DS106, but if not, it's an open digital storytelling course that's been going on in many iterations since 2011 and has probably the richest history in this kind of course and has a lot of features that we've leveraged uh, using this approach. So it's not just one course, there's lots of different pieces to it. But the main premise of the feed WordPress WordPress structure is the main site is of course running in WordPress. Uh, students or participants in DS106 can do their work in any kind of blog platform they wish. It doesn't have to be WordPress, anything that generates an RSS feed. So all their work goes on in their individual sites, and we syndicate it into uh, DS106 using RSS. So what happens is all these posts come into DS106. This place called, you'll see this, the newest stuff on top, but with over a thousand um, sites subscribed to DS106 now, it's not really the optimal way to uh, view the content because it changes so much. But we're able to do some things on the architecture uh, that we've developed. So for many of these sites, uh, we create a sign-up form. People self-sign up to be part of this. In some cases, like DS106, we've done a little bit of extra to make sure it's automated. Um, so they give us some information about themselves, uh, but they indicate if they're part of a particular uh, cohort or, or course, and that allows us to do some uh, interesting subdividing of things. So. Um, the most recent iteration of DS106 last spring was this Noir 106. It was three different sections. So we're able to add a special tag to all the incoming feeds. So these are all the posts that have come in that are part of this Noir 106 thing. And we have things on the right, like we have a list of all the blogs that are coming into this. And there are almost 80 of them. Um, as well as some things like the recent assignment. But what happens is with the way we set this up is we see this uh, site that uh, that has just come in, and this is one student's participants uh, writing up of a kale recipe, um, something to do with kale. We know how much we love kale. So the content lives, in this case, on Savannah's uh, website. And so this is where it all originates. This is where... Uh, she or he does their work. Uh, at the same time, we have the blogs of instructors uh, like Paul Bond. Again, doing their work in their own blog, <coughs> but having it submitted to the DS106 site. Two things we can do. Uh, for a student like Savannah, perhaps everything she's doing is relevant uh, to DS106. So we just bring in everything that she writes. Paul decides, hey, I got a blog where I write about other things, so I'm just going to bring in things that have been tagged or put in a category of my site onto the DS106 site. So in this case, we get a subsection of everything uh, DS106. Uh, we're able to then create other segmentations. Spring of 2014, uh, Jennifer Travis taught an English class um, from St. John University, and her students' uh, blogs were coming in. Uh, to a separate area, if you will, but it's just a different subdivision of all the feeds coming into DS106. As well as, of course, I taught in the spring of 2014 at George Mason University, um, different series of posts coming in, different kind of resources, syllabus provided. So we're able to bring things into DS106 and then kind of split and mix them out. But again, everything is originating from outside sources. We get a copy of it into DS106, we're able to slice and dice it, but then we're able to refeed it back out. It's not everything's DS106. I've done the same sort of things for the RMOOC site, which was a project that went on in uh, British Columbia, uh, where some people were doing uh, art and um, blogging and being social activism about issues going on with the reconciliation with uh, First Nations people. So in this case, uh, the content wasn't strictly uh, from blogs, but we had stuff coming in uh, from Twitter, and we had stuff coming in from uh, that were uh, perhaps by Flickr and Instagram. So we're able to integrate other kinds of media, not just a blog post. Another project from the Harvard Graduate School of Education, shorter term than a course. They run an institute every summer and they syndicate uh, blogs that come in. 
but also during the event, people are tweeting. They are submitting uh, photos, if you will. Uh, so we're able to bring in things um, from uh, Flickr and Instagram, etc., uh, from the event, as well as some special things that we set up um, where people can actually submit uh, essentially content uh, through a special email address. Not only do you have stuff coming in, if you're running the site, uh, you're able to do some curation. So the people who manage the site are able to see all the content coming in and they add an extra category on them to sort of make them featured comments. So these are all the spotlight uh, posts that have come in that the organizers um, go into the WordPress site and just check a box to add a new category to add it to that front page. Different iteration, Project Community is a site uh, for a course in the Hague University of Applied Sciences. Been doing this uh, for three years now. So each course itself uh, becomes its own uh, aggregation hub. In this case, we're actually having students use Tumblr. We just decided to have them use a simpler platform. But when they sign up, um, they're already working in groups. So uh, all their content comes in, but we're able to say, um, segment out just the blog posts that are coming in um, from group eight. So we can see all the content on the left. We can see on the right all the blogs that, that have come in, uh, et cetera. And as well as we can just sort of look at blogs across the system. So again, feeding in, splitting, subdividing, uh, and also done to another level of uh, categorization in thought vectors and concept space. Project from Virginia Commonwealth that went on uh, in 2014. In this case, uh, this hub involved uh, student and faculty blogs from six sections of the same course plus open participants who were uh, following along. So we used a particular theme to be able to bring in content and split it out into many different ways. So we could come in and we could see um, just the list of blogs for each uh, group, but we could also um, come in and see per se um, one section. So we could look at maybe the blogs from Jason Coates, uh, section seven. And so um, these are the blog posts that came in from section seven. There's a separate site for each one. Uh, we have a list of all the student blogs that were part of this. So we can just see all the student blogs. Uh, we could also see um, just the blog posts by the faculty uh, that were part of uh, this project, or we could come in and we could see um, just the blog posts from the open participants. So again, it's a large community. We're able to have all the content mixed together, but we're also able to see it uh, split out in some interesting ways. This was also done in Connected Courses. That was a course about how to design connected type courses, meta, if you will, uh, that was held uh, fall 2014. And in this case, the front page has sort of like a display of the most recent uh, tweets that have come in. So we're syndicating in tweets, as well as blog posts from people uh, who signed up for this course. Again, all these links will necessarily go back out um, to the source blog uh, that, that created the content. So people, ought, again, author in their own space. And another iteration of this going on right now for DML, DML Commons, is somewhat of a community of maybe two different courses that are going on at the same time, but do have um, some overlap. So on the front page, we have a mixture of tweets and blog posts that have come in. If we want to, I can say just filter out uh, just the, the blog posts that have come in related to uh, DML Commons or I could just look at the, the tweets that have uh, come into this uh, site. So you can see these are some links to the, the blogs that have come in. And uh, to get people started, there's many ways that we do this. So in DML Commons, as an example, this is where we send people. So uh, a lot of times we want to help them uh, with some basic questions. Are they going to use an existing blog or create a new one? There's a couple paths they can go doesn't matter necessarily in this case which platform uh, that they use. They can self-host a blog or they can use something that's uh, run or on uh, say uh, Tumblr or Blogger or WordPress.com. Some things to think about before they get started like um, what's the URL you're going to use? What's the name of your blog? Um, pick a platform. Again we make some suggestions. Make your blog and then we send them to a form uh, where they actually do the sign up. 
In this case, uh, we've built uh, this form come in that collects the information from them. We asked for a Twitter account uh, just so we can associate their blogs with a unique uh, author name. A few questions. Basically, we just need the address of their blog. They have to find out their RSS feed. And this is set up that it automatically comes in. So in DML Commons, there's two strands. There's a design research cohort. So these are all blog posts of people uh, writing about uh, their work or their ideas in design research. And there's also a professional pathways uh, blog. Again, these we're seeing the full post, but if we uh, click on the links, we'd actually go out uh, to the source post that uh, it came from. And we're also able to keep track of a list of all blogs uh, that have come in uh, to the site. So you can just get a sense of um, who is participating in here and where their blogs are coming from. And if I decide to uh, come in and let's see, see all the things that are coming from, oh, I had someone picked out um, already. Um, uh, was going to be from, uh, yes, uh, Greg McElvey, um, who's been blogging a lot extensively. So these are copies um, of all his uh, posts that have come in that we have sites on here. We can also go in by the individual user. Um, again, we can see, um, uh, so we can see just the things that, that Greg has added to the site. So again, the whole purpose of this distributed environment allows participation remotely and uh, that we can bring it into the site, have it as a community place, a place for people to see what's new, find many different ways which they can view the content. In a next screencast, uh, I'll show you a little bit more behind the scenes so it gives, so we can give you a sense about what it takes to manage this and some of the things you can do underneath the hood of WordPress to run this sort of thing. That's coming up in part two. Stay tuned.